Welcome to Tuesday Talk. Welcome to Tuesday Talk, as Ella said. Um, hope everyone's doing well. It's me and Ella today, uh, because Pop and Gigi, Pastor Rick, and Miss Pamela are in Florida. Yep, they are in Florida visiting our uncle, but um, they will be back in like a week. So, for this Tuesday and Thursday, mm-hmm. we'll be... It'll be us. Yeah, it'll be us. Um, so, I see a few people are on. Uh, let's say hi to everybody. I see Alinda. Hello, Alinda. Um, Pop is on. Pastor Rick. Uh, mommy is on. Uh, hello, Edgar. Hello. I appreciate your bass playing in church. Um, Tony is on. Hello, Tony. And Danica. Yeah, so 12.03 got on a little a little bit later, but <clears throat> anyway. Two minutes. Yeah, so it'll be Tuesday and Thursday with me and Ella. Mm-hmm. And I hope everybody's having a great day and a great week so far. Yes. How are you? I'm doing good. I will say it's been hot. Oh. Hot weather this week for us. It sure yeah. has. Pretty sure right now it is 90 degrees. It, yeah, it's, it's been pretty hot, but uh, we do have air conditioning, so that's... Thank goodness. That's good. Uh, Gigi and Pop say they have us on the big screen the in big screen. West Palm Beach. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'd like to live in Florida. It seems a little hot for me. I like the colder weather. Yeah. I like the colder weather. But I, like, so, I like to have winter, which is cold, and summer, so you get both. Yeah, yeah. It's really hot. Yeah. Well, I think we should get into the devotional now, but before okay. that, we should pray. Would you mind praying for us? Sure, Ella? I'll pray. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful day that you have provided us with, and I thank you for everything in it that you've given to us. I pray that you will give me and Jack the right words to say, and this will help someone according to your will, Lord. And I just pray that we're all safe and comforted by you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, hello, James Carter. And Alicia is also on. Hello. hello. Yeah, Pop said it's hot down there too, I'd imagine. Sure it is. Um, so today we are in uh, Matthew. And I'm going to be reading from Matthew. We're reading from... Matthew 25, chapter 25, 31 to 45-ish. Okay. Uh, Pop says, Rocco and Anna are watching. Those are cousins. Hi, Rocco Hi. and Anna. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to start reading that. Okay. And so it says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Before him will be gathered all nations, and he will separate them one from another as a, sheep separate, as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come. You, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. So, Jesus um, has all the Christians, and he's saying, Come, inherit the kingdom of God for... You have done all these things for me. And the righteous will answer him, and they said, Lord, when did we do all these things? When did we see you hungry and feed you? And the king will answer, Truly I say to you, as you have done it for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you have done it for me. So this is very important, because when we are kind to one another and serve one another, it is as if we are doing it to the Lord. Yes. And then he will say to those at the left hand, depart from me, for um, 
I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Um, but then they will also answer him and say, When did we not do these? When did we not serve you? And um, he will answer, Truly I say to you, as you did not for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. So, uh, parallel, if you do not do it for other people, then you will not, um, it will not do it for the Lord. Uh, I see Destiny is on too. Hello. Hello. And Ava is also watching. Hi, Ava. Hello, Ava. So, I'm going to share a few points from this. Okay. So the first point is obedience to God. So this this passage passage I look at it and I I see a theme of almost serving others, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. it was it it's saying, you know, we are blessed because we served others, you know, we are saved by by grace, by the grace of God. But then when we serve others, it also pleases the Lord. Yeah. And so the first one is kind of obedience to God. Mm -hmm. Because um, God tells us in Mark twelve thirty one, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there's no other commandment greater than these. We should love others because, you know, God tells us to and because he first loved us. Um, could you read First John 4.19? 4, yes, I can. First John 4.19 says, We love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. The Lord loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us, so that whoever may believe in him will not perish but have eternal life in him forever. So we should also share that love and kind of be a tool of the Lord to share the love to others. Yeah. And we should be obedient to God in doing that because he, you know, tells us to do this. And so, <clears throat> so we have to be obedient to God because he's saying, as you said in Mark, mm -hmm. that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's, he's it's, telling us to do that. Mm -hmm. He's asking us. It's one of the commandments. And we should do the commandments. And so by being obedient to God, we are serving others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, yeah, it's a commandment that he gives us. It's, so we should love others because he first loved us and he tells us to. Yeah. Um, the second point is really, we can't really afford to be indifferent. Mm, that's true. Because when you are rich and you see someone who is poor, wouldn't you be compelled to share your money with them yeah and so faith without works is dead right mm -hmm. but you know we all know we are saved through grace and grace alone covered by the blood of Jesus but then we also have a responsibility to share the gospel and to serve others we won't be saved by those works but God calls us to do that uh, if you don't, and if you don't use your life for the glory of God and serving others, then that will determine your eternal destination, you know? Yeah, and when we are obedient to the Lord and when we serve others, mm -hmm. you know, faith without works is dead, right? Mm -hmm. well, and works aren't going to save us, as you're saying, mm -hmm. but we'll, one thing that we're called to do as a Christian is to witness to others. Mm -hmm. And by doing works to others, that could be a witness to them. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. could show them what the Lord does and how kind he is. If we're reflecting the Lord by serving others, and it, it could show the people we're serving how much God loves them, and it could lead them to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't know what you're doing. You don't know what that's doing for others. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. you're doing is doing. Mm -hmm. So we should be obedient to God. And we should 
use our lives. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the third point. Use your life for the glory of God. Okay. God wants, God wants you to use the life that he has given you to proclaim the gospel, just as you said, to be a light to the nations, to glorify him, obviously. Um, and glorifying God, you know, sometimes we think it's, it's worship, and it totally is worship, you know, singing praises to him. But also, worship is kind of your own life. Yeah. Using your life how God wants you to. You know, that's that's a form of worship. Um, I know one scripture in Psalm, I think mm -hmm. it was, it talks about that what is worship? Worship is presenting your bodies as a sacrifice to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like keeping your body healthy, mm -hmm. keeping your life healthy. That can be that is our true worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, <clears throat> yeah, so using your life for the purpose of God and sharing um, God's life with others is a form of worship. Yes, and just as I was saying how keeping our life healthy and like working out our body and just keeping us healthy, then if we're healthy in the world, we will be strong to go out and do those things. Because if we're not healthy and we're not keeping our body right, the body that the Lord gave us, mm -hmm. how are we going to go out and tell people? We won't have enough strength. But if we keep that physical strength up, we can go tell others. And with the strength of the Lord, it will keep that's us a, That's an interesting point. So, yeah. It says, let's go back to Scripture. Um, let's see. We are blessed because of what the Lord has given us. Yeah. His spirit inside of us compels us to serve others. Yeah. If we have his spirit inside of us, we are compelled, we should be compelled to serve others and um, share the gospel. Because it says in verse 34, the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, and Inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. So we are blessed because of God. Yeah. Uh, hello, Maureen Barry. Hope you're doing well. Hello. Yeah, she said, spread the word show and show love and kindness. Yes. And, yeah, just as in Mark 12, 31. It's one of the, it's the second greatest commandment, Jesus says. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So showing love and kindness is... One of the most important commandments. Yes. So, and also reminds me of the Good Samaritan in um, Luke 10. Let me turn to that quickly. Okie dokie. So, Luke 10 talks about the Good Samaritan. Yeah, Luke 10, 25 to 37. I'm just going to um, summarize this. But... A lawyer is saying to Jesus, how do I inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, what is written in the law? And he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you have answered correctly. Do this and you live. But the lawyer, he, try, he was trying to, you know, justify it again. And he said, who is our neighbor? So God tells us to love one another, mm -hmm. tells us to you know serve others and love our neighbor more than ourselves. But who is our neighbor? And Jesus tells the story. A man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he got robbed and beat up and um, let's say they wounded him and left him. But then a priest came down that way. But he had something to do, and he passed by on the other side. And another Levite came, and he passed by on the other side. Nobody wanted to help this man. But a Samaritan came, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, bound up his wounds, and set him on the donkey, brought him to an inn, and cared for him. Yeah. And that's, that's <clears throat> what we should do to others. 
if we have time, money, and we see someone in need, then we should feel compelled with God's spirit inside of us to go and help them. Because yeah. look at Jesus' life. All he did was serving others. And one of our main goals in life is to become more like Jesus. Yeah. You know? So when we read this, we can um, understand that loving our neighbor includes loving other Christians, but also um, random strangers, even unbelievers yeah. too. Because Samaritans and Jews were like notoriously enemies. They didn't like each other. Yeah. But in this case, the Samaritan, he saw that the Jew was wounded and he cared for him. And that's what Jesus does for us. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus is perfect and holy and he sees us and he helps us and he cares for us. So we yes. should be more like that in serving others because God tells us to. Yes. If and so, and we can't be indifferent about this. You know, we, we, I guess we can, but we shouldn't because God calls us to love one another. Mark 12, love your neighbor as yourself, care for one another. So if you don't lo use your life, God tells you to, you know, God has an expectation. Yeah. Um, I have this analogy that uh, mommy actually helped me come up with. It's kind of like, so we, we have a family, and our family kind of has like expectations. Like, yeah. you do your chores, you yeah. pick up your stuff, you take care of your stuff. And if you don't do those things, it's not like you're going to get kicked out of the family. Yeah. Like, if you don't serve others like God tells you to. You're not going to get, you know, kicked out. Yeah. But you might not get dessert after dinner. Oh, no. So, you, you know, you might be in trouble. You might not get dessert after dinner if you don't do what your family tells you to. Just like if you don't do what God tells you to, you're not going to get kicked out of the family. But, you know, you might get in trouble by, you know, like not getting dessert. Yeah, because you know, we can disobey. Like, if you're in a family, we could disobey our mommy and daddy, right? But we don't because, yeah, the Bible says, and we, we shouldn't. We could, but we know that they're higher. They're not our peers. Mm -hmm. They're higher than us, mm -hmm. and they have authority in the house. And in the same way in our lives, we could disobey God. We don't have to do what he says because he gives us that choice. But we have that respect. Mm -hmm. We have that fear that he is higher. He is not up here. He is mm -hmm. higher than us. He mm -hmm. has authority over the whole world. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that and take that into perspective and see, am I living my life how God wants me to? Mm -hmm. Am I showing him respect by serving others? Mm -hmm. Am I following his will for my life? Yeah. And are you serving others as he calls you to? Yes. That's, that's the question, really. I know. In my life, I mean, I'm only 12, and I haven't really gotten a mm. lot of time to help others in a ways maybe you do, but I know in my life I have to be ready for those times. That's why I want to get all the knowledge I can so that if that happens in my life and I need to help someone or someone needs help, that I will have the Lord strengthen me and the knowledge that I should do that because in serving them, I am serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. I see there are some comments here. Okay. Um, yeah, Mommy has a good point. We should try to do all these things because mm -hmm. we know no one is perfect and we are only saved by the grace of God. But mm -hmm. we can try and know that we're trying to know God's will and we're trying to be good sons and daughters and good stewards of what he has given us just like yes. in the in one of the other um, Tuesday talks I did just before this the talents you know God gives us 
gives us things, and we need to be good stewards of what he gives us. No? Yes, and the Ten Commandments, it says, that serve the Lord your God with all your heart, and serve others, love your neighbor, and love the Lord, and love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it doesn't say after that, love yourself. It says, love the Lord, love your neighbors, love yourself. It does not say that. It doesn't, it doesn't say love say yourself. That. And see, sometimes maybe somebody will be in need, but we want to get to the store so we can get back really quick and do what we want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't have to be bad, what we want to do. But if it's keeping us from serving others, maybe we should take a break. Maybe we should just think that by serving this person, it could be a witness to them. It could lead them to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it said, and you may think, but I have to get home and do my work and finish what I'm doing. And you should do that and you should finish that, but stop for just a minute. See if they need help. Ask them, can I help you? So if you find an opportunity to help someone, then helping others and serving others is more important than whatever else you're doing. Yeah. That's a good, good point there, Alan. Thank you. So we should be obedient to God in our lives. We can't really afford to be indifferent because that's not what God calls us to do. And he wants us to use our life. He didn't give us this life so we could sit around and keep to ourselves. He gave us this life so that we could worship him, but also serve others and proclaim yes. the word to others and mm -hmm. to do good works. That's what he calls us to do. Yes. He doesn't force us to do those things, mm -hmm. but that's what he calls us to do and that's what we should do because that's that's one of the good things about God. He doesn't force us to do anything. He gives us a choice. Yeah, he gives us a choice. So if we don't want to serve him, we don't have to serve him, but then we're not going to heaven. In the end, it won't be good for us. Mm -hmm. So when we choose to do what God wants us to do, instead of doing what our own desires want us to do, that is fulfilling the will of God. And we should seek the will of God. Um, Jeremiah 29 13, could you get that? Yeah. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, uh, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans uh, to give you a hope and a future. So he has a plan for us, a specific, unique plan for our lives, and we should seek to know his will so that we could carry it out in a way that is pleasing to him. Okay, so... Jeremiah 29, 13. 13, okay, it says, And you will seek me and find me when you see, search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. You, If you seek the Lord and you... Another scripture says, Ask and you will receive. Knock and you will the have the will door open with you. Yeah. Uh, seek and you will find, you know? So, he has a plan for our lives, and we should seek to know his plan. Uh, Linda says, Luke 10, it's Luke 10, 25 to 37. It is, 25 to 37. So, yeah. Okay, 1226, we're almost done with okay. here. So, yeah, I just want to remind you all, that we're all, we might, uh, I see most of us are Christians here, but some people who might be watching in the future, you know, Jesus died for our sins. He yeah. died so that we may have eternal life in him. But now that we have salvation, we still have a little bit of responsibility, just as mommy said, mm -hmm. there are expectations that come when we come to Christ. Yes, and we're not saying that you can't love yourself. No, no, no. But we're saying that if it says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So it, if you're doing what you want to do, right? You some, see something in need, right? 
And but your your own love for yourself and what you want to do is getting in the way of your love for others, which the Lord is calling you to love. Mm-hmm. And something's got to change. Your lifestyle's got to change a little mm-hmm. bit. So you're making room in your life that you can step away from what you are wanting for one minute at least and check on that person, see if they need help. Because by serving others, you are serving the Lord. And I know one scripture says, do everything as if you were doing it for the Lord, not for human master. Mm, just like in this. Yes, so do it as if you were doing it for the Lord, because you are doing it for the Lord. It's The Lord is asking this of you. And you don't have to do this. You could go on with what you would, what you would want, but mm, to me, I wouldn't want to be stuck with that guilty conscience that I could have helped that person. I could have done something for them. I could have not I given up five minutes of my own time watching the show I want to watch and help them put the groceries in their car, whatever it is. I could have done that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to live with that. And we're not perfect. We're not always going to do that. But we need to try because this is what the Lord's asking of us. We need to try the hardest that we can. Mm-hmm. And so, how do we how do we know what God wants for us? Well, we read the Bible. That's, yes, that's really the main yes. way to the know. The Bible what God wants. is God's word, and the Bible is true, and the Bible is what the Lord is telling us to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we should seek His will, so that we may know His will and obey Him. And just as you said, yeah, we're not perfect, but God cleanses us. His sacrifice makes us righteous if we would accept him and devote our lives to him. Uh, yeah, Pop says this is a high calling. Being a it Christian is. is a high calling. So, so that, you know, you you have the responsibility to sh- proclaim the gospel to others. Mm-hmm. It's not just, you know, be a Christian and go to heaven. No. He calls you. You should... Um, yeah, mommy says it may start at home in your family. Yeah. Just maybe you have a relative or uh, a son or a daughter who turned away from the Lord or doesn't know the Lord. The first step may be witnessing to them. Yeah. God has a unique plan for your life. He has a unique, unique way for you to share the gospel. So it may be going, be a missionary in a different country, or it may just start at home in your own family, witnessing to someone. Yeah. Anywhere, at the grocery store. At work, in the grocery store, yeah. Yes. And God has a specific plan and a specific way for you to... Witness to other people. Yes. Yeah. God will put you where he wants you to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, Maureen says, thank you, Maureen, for that encouragement. Thank you. Yes, we do all need to be kind and loving and spreading God's word. Yes. And Pop says, we are empowered through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and we can't, we can't all do, we can't do all this on our own. No. If we try to do it on our own, we will surely fail. It's the spirit in us that empowers us. Yeah. See, so 1231. Yeah, I was just going to say we should pray out. Yeah. Uh, mommy says, and it can be simple as saying hi. Mm-hmm. Hi. It could start a whole thing, whole conversation, and it could lead to them becoming a Christian. Mm-hmm. And being able to experience the grace in the love of God. And that starts with us, God, through us, loving them. Yes. All righty. Okay, so remember, everybody, to be ob- we should be obedient to God. Even though it's hard, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, um, we should serve others because he calls us to love your neighbor as yourself. We can't afford to be indifferent because... 
God saved us by his grace and his mercy, but he also calls us to share the gospel and to do good works. And if you don't, you know, I don't know what might be going through the person who don't, doesn't head, but it could determine your eternal uh, destination in the end. But yep. just remember that it's God's grace that saves you again and again. And yep. so three, he wants you to use your life to glorify him, to share the gospel. He wants you to use your life, and he has a plan for your life. And so, and we should also seek God and seek his will so we would know that plan so that we may obey him. And that you do that by reading the Bible, pray, worship, it always points back to the Bible. If you familiarize yourself with the Bible, it will be easier to overcome challenges. Because the Bible, it's like, I thought of this one um, <coughs> Tuesday talk. The Bible is like, so your life is like a hike, almost. A hike. Yeah. Okay. Or like a trek through the mountains. And the Bible is your map, and the Holy Spirit is your guide. So it all turns back to the Bible. If you read your Bible, familiarize yourself, you will begin to maybe familiarize yourself with what God's will is in your life. And prayer is really good. Uh, Alicia says, before we go, can you include my mom in prayer? Sure, we'll be, we'll pray for your mother, Alicia. Hope you get a good family application. Okay, we'll pray for your mom in her apartment. Uh, if anybody else has any other um, prayer re requests, we will be happy to pray for you. Um, but 1234, I think we should close out in prayer, okay? Yes. Okay. I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you for your eternal greatness and your mercy and your love. You are so good and so mighty, and we live to praise you, and we live to worship you and do what you call us to do. I pray that we would um, listen to you, listen to your voice in what you're calling us to do, um, familiarize ourselves with your word so that we may begin to know your will, and I just pray that you would work through us and be with us in our lives, Lord. You are so good and so mighty, and I praise you. I pray for everybody on Tuesday Talk uh, today that they will be blessed and that you would be with them. You would send your angels down to protect us. And no matter what we're going through, remember that we have your Holy Spirit and you are looking out for us. Uh, so I just pray for this day and pray for this Tuesday Talk. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given us. I pray for uh, Alicia's mom, her mother, that she would, that you have a plan for her and that whatever your will is for her, that it would come, uh, come and be shown, Lord, that you would help her in all that she <clears throat> is going through. And for the apartment, I pray that you bless that situation and that you would bless her and all that is going on and all that she does you would be with her and watching over her and I pray for anybody else um, on Tuesday talk now or watching in the future whatever they need whatever they're praying for I pray that you would be with them and you would answer them Lord you are so good and mighty and we praise your holy name amen amen okay thank you for being on everybody we really yeah. appreciate it um, and we just pray that you would have a great day today. So we should close out now because it's already 1236, but I hope everybody had a great time. Yeah. Remember, God is always with you and he wants you to serve others because he loved us first. Goodbye, everybody, and Bye. I hope to see you in heaven.